All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, OpenVPN sponsor this tutorial on how to set up Cloud Connexa to connect to Synology NASes as well as your computer. So you can do things like an offsite backup as well as just access both NASes without requiring any port forwarding or even a public IP address. So this works perfectly fine if you got something like Starlink and you just do not have a public IP for it address. And so traditional VPNs will not work. All right, so before we get started, what is Cloud Connexa? Cloud Connexa is basically a VPN as a service for a company. And they've got a pretty good free tier and we're actually going to be using it now so you can do this without paying for anything. And essentially it's offloading all the functionality of a site site VPN server as well as a remote access VPN server to the cloud. So you don't have to set anything up yourself. You basically just have them deploy it. And that means you can do things that you otherwise could not like host this in an environment on Starlink where otherwise you'd not be able to create your own VPN server because a VPN server requires an IP4 address, a public IP4 address with the ability for port forwarding. You can sometimes do it with IP6, but it's I've never really had any success with that at all. And the thing that really differentiates this service compared to others is the fact that it is stock open VPN. And that means you do not have to install a client on every device you want to hook up. Instead, you just use OpenVPN. And so for Synology, we don't have to figure out how to install a Docker container or anything like that. And this will also work on something like a Unify router. So Unify Dream Machines have the ability to take a OpenVPN profile. And so that means you can hook this up to your entire network without having to worry about hosting another service and dealing with static routes or anything like that because it is just stock OpenVPN. Everything else is handled for you. So you can just install this profile on a dream machine or pretty much any prosumer router out there takes a VPN certificate file. And so that means you can set up a site to site VPN between pretty much any two routers. As long as they can both take an open VPN certificate file, you can set this up. You don't need a static IP4 address for something like a IPsec site site VPN. You don't even need a public IP4 address you really just need an account and that is it. So today we're going to be using one tenth of what this thing can do and we're just going to be installing it on two Synologies as well as my laptop so that everything can talk no matter what network we're on. And this is great for setting up a remote hyper backup job because you don't have to worry about routes or anything like that. It is just a stock VPN certificate file and so everything is just going to route for us. You can do this over Quick Connect. You can do this any access you have to DSM, you can do this over. And you should also be able to install this on pretty much any other third party NAS if you wanted to as well, because pretty much all NASs at this point, save one or two, have the ability to connect to an open VPN certificate file. And so you can just connect them there. All right, so to get started, just go to openvpn.net and go to Cloud Connexa. I'm here right here and I've already set up my account. But if you don't, there's a sign up button up in the upper right hand corner and I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. And I'm just going to sign in with my domain. So I created SpaceRex. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just log in with my auth provider. So that's all gonna be very blurry. All right, so this is just the admin panel. Create an account takes two seconds. I did it earlier. And this is where we can see there's really kind of two different things most people are going to be focusing on, and that is networks and hosts. So if you're gonna be doing this, actually installing it on a router like your Dream Machine or even like a Linksys prosumer router, you do that in the networks tab, and that is really kind of designed as connecting multiple sites together. So this is where if you want access to a bunch of servers behind one router, you just install on the router itself, and then you don't have to install on any other devices. And the way it works as well is, every other device on that network can also talk to anything on here without taking up connectors. And so that is that option. And then if you just want a single host, like for this case, it's just gonna be on the Synology, we go into the host tab. If you look at this, I've already got my one setup right here, tank, that is my main Synology file server. I already went through and set that up. It's the exact same steps we're about to follow on this test bench right here it's the same thing, so I already went ahead and did it. And now we wanna go ahead and install this on this DS923 Plus that I've been using as a test bench for the last zillion videos. And to do that, all we have to do is come into our host tab, 
hit add host. Just give it a name. Then we can also give it a domain name as well right here. So this will just essentially create a DNS record to make it a little bit easier for us to manage. It's up to you if you want to use that or not, or IP addresses will always just work. And then it will also create a connector. So essentially the host is a device and then the connector is actually how it connects in. So in this case with the Synology, the host and the connector are the same box, but when you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you can actually have multiple hosts with one connector or vice versa. So there's a lot more to do there, but we're just gonna create a single one. We could call it. And now just hit next. So now for this provider screen, we're actually just going to go back and just download it directly because we don't wanna just run a script. Instead, we literally just wanna download the OpenVPN config file. So all we do is we come back into our connectors tab over here and we just hit download OpenVPN format. So that will give us the ability to just plug it right into the NAS without running any scripts, without having anything at all. We will just be able to upload the OpenVPN config file directly onto the NAS. You can also see right here, we've got these tunnel IP4 addresses. And if you know your reserved IP4 addresses, these are all within the CG NAT space. So that means that these are never going to conflict with local IP addresses. So even if you've got tons and tons of subnet overlap, you're guaranteed to always be able to use these two unless you've broken a lot of networking conventions to route all of your traffic because you are not an ISP. You should not be using these IP4 addresses. So we can use that. Our file has downloaded and all we do is we just come into control panel on our NAS and go into network interfaces and just create a new VPN profile. It's going to just be a OVPN file. And now we just name it a connection. So one thing about this is Synology, no matter what you do, requires a username and password authentication for OpenVPN. Very annoying, but you can just enter whatever. It does not matter because this is using certificate-based authentication. For whatever reason, Synology just does not allow you not to have a username and password in there, even if the OpenVPN server does not require it. Weird thing about Synology, but you just type in whatever you'd like there. And then we just go ahead and select that downloaded file. Now we can just go ahead and hit next. And now this is where you've got a few different options. So I would always recommend reconnect when VPN connection is lost and allow other network devices to connect to this Synology through the internet connection. This allows you to kind of have multiple devices on this network and managing your own static subnets if you wanted to. But if you wanted to just have a single device connecting to this thing, you don't have to bother with this. Then finally, there's the option for use default gateway on remote network. This is something you can use if you want to use some of their more advanced features like DNS blocking, queries, locking stuff down, tracking internet traffic, and things like that. They have a whole section where you can say, hey, if you're going to this website, I want you to route through this router on the LAN. And so that can give you the ability to have essentially your entire company only ever access a website through a specific IP address. And so even if people are working from home, you can actually have just that one website coming through one of your office's public IP addresses. And that means that you can set up in rules on the website saying, only allow logins from this public IP address. There's a crazy amount of stuff it can do, but for us, we're not even gonna check that because we don't need it. Though, if you do wanna use that for the Synology, you can. And now we just hit connect. And so just like that, it has gone ahead and connected on in, and we can see that that got the IP address that we were expecting it to. So now, while we're in here, we can go ahead and just set up that hyper backup to the remote site. And we can just use this IP address right here because it's an offsite setup. So we can actually just take this IP address for my backup unit, which is this 100.96.1.34. That is that special IP address that is only accessible through this Cloud Connecta VPN hookup that will guarantee route, no matter if you've got subnet conflicts or anything like that, it will guarantee route 
to whatever device you're talking about. And so we're going to just use that because we want to make sure that when we drop this off at our mom's house, it is just going to connect even if she changed subnets or anything like that because this IP address is fixed to that device. But there's actually two ways we could use it. So one, we could use that IP address, but if there's not a subnet overlap between the two networks, you can also use the local IP address if you wanted to. So both of them route and you can get way more advanced with your networks tab and choosing which things can connect to what and where your subnets live and do full blown site to site routing using this. But we're going to keep it super simple and guarantee that we don't care what the network configuration is at the remote place. We will just choose this IP address right here. And now we're just going to go ahead and open up hyper backup. So we're going to go ahead and hit plus choose folder and system. I've already gone ahead and installed hyper backup vault and created a shared folder on the tank system. So this is just the side of it of getting the routing to work. And we are going to go ahead and just choose that IP address and we can choose to still have encryption. It's going to be encrypted anyway, but now we're also encrypted from cloud Conexa. And now we're just going to go ahead and log in. You'll see I pasted in that IP address from the connector FS01 tank right here. And that's the one that is guaranteed not to have any conflict because these IP addresses should not be used by anybody other than CG NAT. So now we're going to go hit log in and I've not hooked up my laptop to this. And so we are going to get this. Hey, it may be inaccessible. So what we can do is we can just do a password login. And I do want to mention one thing that I have found, and this is actually a bug with DSM. You may have to set this up for the first time and not have that multi-factor authentication enabled for this account because the multi-factor authentication that came in DSM 7.2 does not work on this screen. So if you're running into a problem where the login's unsuccessful, go ahead and just for really quick, disable multi-factor authentication on the destination device, log in, and then it should work. So we're just going to go ahead and paste that in. And now the way we know this has worked is we should see hyper backup destination right there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and choose my folders just like any other hyper backup. Yada, yada, yada. Just, I'm just going to click through this one. All right. So that is how you set these backups and it works just like that. If you are using snapshot replication, I do want to just touch on that really quick. You just hit the replication tab remote and then you want to make sure you go into this custom settings because you want to make sure they have the same route. I'm going to touch on this just really quick because it's something you run into fairly often. We need to fill out both the destination and the source server with those IP addresses. So I'm going to choose the destination is going to be this guy and the source is actually going to be itself. I'm not going to touch on that anymore. I just wanted to point that out because it took me a long time to figure that out doing these things, but snapshot replication, whenever you're going over natted or anything like that kind of connections that are not on the same local subnet, you need to make sure the source server is the right IP address that can access the destination server. So if we do that, it will then work. This is super important and a really powerful way to backup as well. All right. So now, our backup was successful. It was, I don't think there's any data in that folder, but it shows that it can back up. Now let's just go in and show how we can connect to either one of these NASs as well without caring about what subnet we're on and being able to do it over our Wi-Fi hotspot. And to do that, you just use the exact same open VPN client that you use for everything else. So to download it, you just go to open VPN just Google open VPN connect, download it for windows, Mac, or any other thing you're running, but I've already got it downloaded and you're going to see it very, very, very blurry because I've got a lot of open VPN connections because I use it for all my clients. All I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the plus button in the lower right hand corner. And then to log in, we're just going to go to the URL, whatever you set up. So I set it up space Rex, and then it's just openvpn.com. So it's whatever your domain is, openvpn.com it is then going to send us back to this off page 
and then it's just going to directly download the profile and you get to choose where you want your closest connection to be. For me, it's Virginia. So you choose your server and then it's going to pop us back on into our VPN configuration. And we just import it. So just like that, this top one's the only one that's not blurred out. And this is our connection right there. We connect, it auths, and now we are hooked up on in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put myself on my phone's hotspot. It's really slow, but we'll be good enough to at least show that this process does in fact work. Yeah, so we've got one bar, but it's important to show that this works on a different network. All right, so now that's connected, we're just gonna go in and go to that IP address. So I did use a DNS name though. Now, if I wanted to, I could also come into our connectors over here and just copy this IP address and it will work the exact same way. But there we go, we can see that it is actually hooked up and we can also hook up to our other connector. Now this was the most basic version of this and we can see, all right, I'm hooking up to my test bench DS923. And this was the most basic version of this setup. We can see we hit it right here. If you want to also be able to use the actual local IP addresses, that's where you can hook up networks and just really go down the rabbit hole and hook everything on up, where you can actually say, okay, this network is available on this connector, and that way you can actually run things on different subnets and be able to have flawless connections in between devices without having to worry about what subnet they're on and transitioning between them. But for basic setups, especially for just like hosting different services and grabbing files and doing settings, these will always work for you. And you also get to use filtering. So if you want to have employees who can only access specific ports, you can do that directly through here as well. And you'll just have everybody running through that. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Thanks to Cloud Connexa for sponsoring this tutorial. It's pretty straightforward. It just allows you to connect to pretty much anything without significant configuration because it's just stock OpenVPN. And pretty much all devices today, at least NASes and routers, have a very easy way to hook up to an OpenVPN server without installing third-party software. Go and leave any of the tutorials you'd like to be making in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.